I don't know who needs to hear this today, but I wonder if we as Christians need to have a sharper focus on eternity. As Americans, uh, specifically as American Christians, uh, I am concerned that we have become too here-minded. Uh, another way of saying that is worldly-minded, but perhaps hearing it from a different perspective uh, might help us to think about this concept in a way that we sometimes will just gloss over whenever someone talks about being worldly or, or worldly-minded. Uh, and so I'm concerned that we may be so here-minded that we have lost the focus that we as Christians ought to have on eternity. We worry about our jobs, we worry about our financial security, we worry about our health, we worry about our children's future, we worry about national security, uh, the list can go on and on. Uh, and while these are all legitimate issues in and of themselves, are we so here-minded that these things crowd out the peace, the joy, the faith that we are to have in the Lord? You know, anticipation has always been a hallmark of God's people. Uh, in the Old Testament, the Israelites anticipated entering the Promised Land. Uh, in the New Testament, the first century Christians lived their life with a, a confident expectation and anticipation of that glorious hope of sharing eternity with their Lord and Savior. Paul said it several different ways. One way that he said it was to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4. It is a trustworthy statement deserving full acceptance. For it is for this we labor and strive, because we have fixed our hope on the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of believers. Prescribe and teach these things, Paul told Timothy. Uh, the first century church was fixed on that hope, fixed on the anticipation of the future that they had in Christ Jesus. Paul understood the concept. Yes, we live here. We have responsibilities and concerns here. But our goal, our focus, isn't about here. Samuel Stennett was born in 1727. He was the son of a Baptist minister who served at the Little Wild Street Baptist Church in London. At only 20 years old, Samuel became his father's assistant and upon his father's passing in 1758, assumed his father's responsibilities. Samuel was a very respected and influential minister among dissenting and nonconformist members and Christians of his time, even having the ear of statesmen who were in favor of social reforms and religious freedoms. While not the most prolific of hymn writers, he still wrote 39 hymns and was even awarded a Doctor of Divinity degree from the University of Aberdeen for his accomplishments. Today's hymn, which has been set to several tunes throughout history, is an optimistic song of anticipation. Take a listen to one of the less familiar tunes, and I'll be back. On Jordan's stormy banks I stand and cast a wishful light To Canaan's fair and happy land where my possessions lie I am bound for the promised land I am bound for the promised land Oh, who will come and go with me? I am bound for the promised land. O'er all those wide extended plains shines one eternal day. There Christ the sun forever reigns and scatters night away. I am bound for the promised land. I am bound for the promised land. Oh, who will come and go with me? I am bound for the promised land. When 
shall I reach that happy place and be forever blessed? When shall I see my Father's face and win His kingdom rest? I am bound for the promised land. I am bound for the promised land. Who, who will come and go with me? I am bound for the promised land. Filled with delight, my raptured soul would here no longer stay. Though Jordan's waves around me roll, fearless I launch away. I am bound for the promised land. I am bound for the promised land. I don't know about you, but every heartache that I experience, every funeral service that I either officiate or attend for a friend, a family member, a member of the church that I have come to love and respect, my desire for eternity becomes even greater. I, I live a life in anticipation and am comforted by the words of anticipation that John spoke about in Revelation 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there is no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride adorned for her husband, and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is among men, and He shall dwell among them, and they shall be His people, and God Himself shall be among them. And He shall wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there shall no longer be any death, and there shall no longer be any mourning or crying or pain. For the first things have passed away. I long for that day. I live in anticipation of that day. We need a sharper image, a sharper focus on eternity. I've got nothing but big love for you. I hope everyone has a great rest of your day.